Are you in the market for a filament dryer? Should the iBoss Polyphemus be the one that you choose? Stick around and you'll find out. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about this filament dryer. This is the iBoss Polyphemus. Now I had to look up what in the world Polyphemus is or was, uh, it is a Greek Cyclops uh, monster. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna take a look at this filament dryer. Now this uh, unit uh, was purchased with my own money. It was not a review unit, so you're gonna hear exactly what I think about uh, this. Not that it would change had they sent it to me. But um, yeah, we're gonna jump in. I'm gonna show you uh, kind of quick unboxing experience. Um, the construction or uh, assembly of the unit itself. Um, and then we're gonna kind of dig into some of the features and uh, things that I would recommend or changes. And we'll wrap up with a uh, final list of pros and cons uh, for the unit. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the next part. Let's talk about the unboxing. The first thing you're gonna see as you open the box is the manual. It's a pretty decent manual. Underneath that, you've got your accessories. You got some PTFE tubing, a spare motor, spare O-rings, the screws, and the Allen wrench. Underneath that, you have the main unit itself. And then you have the top. And underneath the top, you have the four side panels. Under those four side panels, you will see the rest of the frame and the top handle. Let's move on to assembly. The assembly is quite simple. You'll either start with the top or bottom uh, piece of the frame, and then you will simply install these four side rails into the slots. Next, you'll remove the protective coating from the side panels. They actually tell you to do this in the instruction manual before you install it. Uh, if you left them on, uh, while you were installing, it would be very tricky to remove that. You'd have a lot of plastic, protective uh, plastic in those channels. Once you have the four sides installed, then you'll take the remaining piece. The piece I'm doing here is the top, as you can tell uh, by the side uh, handle screw portions. This is probably the trickiest part as you're dealing with these uh, four sides that uh, are not well supported. Once you have that done, you will simply place the top on and then the handle goes in place and then you've got four screws, one in each corner for the top, followed by two screws, one on either side of the handle. Once that's complete, flip the unit over and there are four screws to be installed in the bottom. After that, you are done. Just put the lid on. Let's take a look at the various settings and options here. Here we have the power button, the option button, and the settings button, the up and down arrows, and then our rotation enable button. When you turn the unit on, it will go into the last state that it was currently on. Here it's set for PLA at 50 degrees Celsius for four hours. We have a display of the current temperature and then the current relative humidity. By pressing the option button, I can cycle through the various filament presets. So we have PLA, ABS, PA, PC, PETG, ASA, PVA, TPU, PP, and then we have three memory positions. Hitting that option button a second time will lock us in. The cycle will start. By hitting the setting button, I can change three more parameters. First, you'll see that temperature blinks. I can raise or lower the temperature that I want. Pressing it again will allow me to set the heating level, so I have low, medium, and high, and then hitting it a third time will allow me to change my duration. I can go anywhere from 30 minutes all the way up to 24 hours. Once I go past 24 hours, I have one more setting, and that is this one. The three dashes indicate an indefinite, so if I leave it on this setting, it will run continuously and never shut off. Now there's another setting or another option that I have here. If I hit the power button a second time, it will take me into hold humidity level. At this point, I can set a desired humidity level and it will hold that. So if I want it to stay at 20% relative humidity, it will turn the unit on 
until it gets to that level and then it'll turn off. As the humidity creeps up again, it will turn on and it will hold that humidity level. And then if I hit the power button a third time, the unit will turn off. Now, one more button that we haven't talked about yet is the rotation enable button. If I hit that, you will see the 360 icon comes on and then my rear uh, rollers will engage. Moving on to other features of the unit. On the front, you have three ports for running your filament out of the unit. So one, two, three. Now the one here on my right is for the right spool. The one over here would be for the left spool. The one on the middle is actually for the use of the three kilogram spools. Now my unit did, because it is a pre-order, it did come with the uh, extension kit which adds a section um, to the unit that will increase the height of the base here so it lets it sit up a little bit taller and to facilitate the use of those 300 uh, or 3 kilogram spools. So if you're using those large spools then you can use this center spot uh, to run your filament out. As you can see here the back side of the unit has two output holes. Uh, again, that's going to be using the right or left spool if you are running your filament out of it. And these, again, do have a slotted channel and it needs to get underneath the desiccant uh, tab there, but you can put your PTFE tube. Now, this tube was included with the unit. Mine measured 439 millimeters, so roughly 44 centimeters worth of tube. Um, if you need more, you're on your own. On the top here, we have exhaust vents. They tell you when you are drying your filament, you should turn it to the on position. And when you are done drying, you should close it to prevent uh, the levels of humidity from increasing. If I spin this around on the other side, you can see that we have some uh, filament uh, holes here. So there are three holes back here that you can run your filament out of if you are using this while you are printing. So you can put your PTFE tubes in there and when you are, if you are not using that, then they include these little grommets that you can put in there to prevent uh, a path for humidity to enter the chamber. And yes, this thing is an absolute dust magnet. I have already wiped it down before trying to start this video. Let's take a look at the inside of the unit. On the inside here at the front, we have the temperature and humidity sensor. You can see the vents here where the air blows out. You have vents both on the front and the back side. Um, back here, we have the uh, drive section. So the motor is directly underneath here. Um, you can see I've got my ribbed sleeves that were printed out of TPU. And then in the very back of the unit, we have two desiccant bays. So these pop off and you have the ability to put desiccant packs or I may end up printing uh, some 3D uh, or some 3D printed holders to hold the desiccant uh, in there uh, just so that it doesn't become a mess or if I want to change it out because it doesn't last forever. I'm not having to worry about it ending up in places that it shouldn't be. So that is the inside of the unit. Let's work on a little modification to this unit. So the rollers are made of a very hard plastic. That can cause some issues of getting grip when you put your spools in here. So I am making, uh, or I have made these ribbed sleeves, as I call them. I will make these available on Maker World. And I'm adding these. These are printed out of TPU. Um, but I think that'll give us a little better grip. Now there's three sizes. There's a 30 millimeter size here, then a 20 millimeter size, and a five millimeter size. And they're simply gonna go on in this fashion here. Basically what we have to do is we need to leave a little bit of a gap for this uh, rubber O-ring here that engages the roller. If 
uh, if we don't have that space there, what happens is the increased distance here will push on that rubber. Um, actually, it'll even push on the drive wheel and this will continually roll. Now, I don't know if that makes it uh, worse for the motor or anything like that, but uh, that can happen. The other thing you want to watch out about is making sure that this 30 millimeter isn't pushed up too far because it will hit the bearing and it'll cause it uh, to not roll very well. So once you get these all in place, we're going to push that down. We're just going to make sure that we have enough of a gap there and we aren't uh, causing that to engage when it shouldn't. And then this bearing, this cutout portion right here, needs to go up against the side of the unit. So we will simply slide that in and then we just push it down, it'll click into place. And now we should have better traction on our unit. With the TPU installed, if we turn the unit on and engage the drive wheels, you can now see that that is engaging and our spool will turn and it'll probably work a little better. I had times where you could see the drive shafts rotating, but uh, there was no engagement uh, so here, even on an empty cardboard spool, which is pretty light, we are still uh, getting rotation. And if I had a full spool on there, I'm sure it would work just as well. I hope you found all that information uh, very useful. So let me just touch on a few things. Um, one thing that did impress me, so just some of the fit and the finish, uh, things like having uh, these uh, the, the plexiglass here on the top, um, the screw holes are chamfered or whatever you'd want to call that so that they're they're flush so i thought that was a nice touch uh, this vent here on the top is great having the little plugs here um, are wonderful uh, so those are a few things uh, that i that i like but let's get into my list of pros and cons so some of the pros um, this is great if you do multi-filament drying now uh, if i move over a little bit Right over my shoulder, you can see that uh, that's another uh, filament dryer. That's the iBoss uh, Cyclops, if I remember. Yep, Cyclops. So you can see they got this Greek uh, theme going on. Um, that one only has, you know, it's very minimal as far as the, uh, the features and functions go. You can't, there are no memory settings. You turn it on, it starts drying. You can change the temperature, you can change the time. That's it. So if you want to switch from one filament to another, you know, PLA, P PEG, ASA, whatever it is, you need to find the manual or keep records somewhere, you know, a sticky note of, of what the recommended temperatures are for that because there's nothing there. Whereas this one, you can just uh, go through that menu and uh, it's got some presets there. And then it also has those memory uh, slots. Uh, to put your own settings in there. You've got a lot of options as far as your filament paths go. So we got those three in the front, the two in the back, the three on top, so that's great. Um, I think the, the fact that this rotates, that's, uh, you know, it's a kind of a unique feature. I think maybe that's gonna start being more common, but that should help um, prevent some of that warping that can happen if when you're, uh, these spools just sit in that one spot. Obviously the heat is coming here from the bottom, so you're going to have uh, potentially uneven drying because you've got one spot that's going to get a lot uh, more direct uh, heat than uh, what's going on the top. And then the fact that this has desiccant holders built in, uh, I think that's another great feature. Uh, just like the AMS unit um, on my uh, bamboo printer over to the side there, uh, that's great. So that's also going to help uh, keep your filament dry. You know, when you're in there. Now, some of the cons. Um, the price, it's not cheap. Uh, I think I paid, uh, it was $129 pre-order. Uh, that did net me this uh, second part here, which is the little expansion to, if I want to do those three kilogram rolls. Uh, and it's going to get uh, more expensive here in the future. So it's definitely not the most inexpensive filament dryer out there, but I was very happy with my Cyclops, so I, uh, you know, I, when I saw this one available, it's not that much more expensive, and so I wanted to get some of those uh, features. Uh, another con, that motor life. Uh, so right in the manual, it tells you the motor is good for about 1,500 hours. Um, you know, 
I don't know when I'm gonna need the motor. Uh, they do include a second motor in the box. Um, now, part of the cons, uh, it's great you gave me a second motor. There are no instructions on how to change this thing. Um, it's, the manual says go to our website, look at the instructions in there. It also talks about going to the website to look for maintenance instructions. I searched, I didn't find anything. I don't know if they just haven't put it up yet. Um, I am making a second video. I tore this thing apart and just to see how this motor uh, is changed. It's not terribly difficult, but um, I do have some recommendations on that. So that is a, a little bit of a con. Um, the fact that they use those hard plastic uh, rollers there on the back for the drive, um, the first time I turned it on, my spools, they would turn and then it would kind of skip. They wouldn't turn and then they'd turn a little bit. So it was very haphazard um, whether or not they would uh, engage. So uh, I came up with the little TPU uh, sleeve solution and I think that, that will help. Um, QA, so my unit, only came with three feet on the bottom. I think they could do a better job. You're paying over $130 for a uh, filament dryer. Um, it's kind of a bummer that uh, my dryer would wobble. I took them all off when I tore the thing apart. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they, need, they, they could do a better job with that. Um, I do like the fact, uh, yeah, I know I'm in the con section, I mean, it, it would be really poor form to not give you the, uh, the little Allen wrench to put this thing together, but I do like it when they give you the tools so you're not having to, to find something. I mean, how bad would it be if you didn't have the right size, because uh, this is a very small uh, Allen wrench. But you've got these rubber O-rings here. Again, there is no mention on what to do with these. Now, because I tore my unit apart to figure out how the drive mechanism worked, I realized that you can see them. There are rubber O-rings that uh, engage on those rear spools. But uh, I think it would be somewhat of a nightmare to change these things uh, if you didn't know what was going on. Now, it's actually, you have to remove uh, the, the bottom plate that covers the heater you remove the screw that holds down those, uh, those rear um, rollers, and then that part will pop out, and then it would be very easy to change the motor. But again, that information you know, should be in there. Um, I can't even tell that it, you know, there's no mention that these things are gonna wear out, um, but uh, you know, that would be good, good to know. So um, those are a few cons that uh, come with the unit, but um, overall, you know, what's my impression? Well, um, I'm happy that I bought it. I, I definitely recommend it, even though it's expensive and there are a few cons here and there. Um, I think it's, it's gonna work out well for me. Now, ha I haven't used it a ton. Um, I did run uh, some TPU in it last night and it seems to have made a great improvement on the things that I was printing for that. So I have no doubt that it's gonna function very well as a dryer and uh, it's got a lot of uh, great features. So overall, um, definitely gonna give this one a uh, two thumbs up, or uh, I'd probably give this, in my uh, little directed tech, uh, I'd probably give this a three and a half to, f no, I'll say four. Um, I think uh, it's gonna lose a star for some of those uh, quirks with like the QA and uh, the manual not being as complete as it could be. Not that it's a bad manual, it, it's definitely, I've seen a lot worse um, as far as, you know, things uh, coming from uh, other countries. Uh, it's, it's well written and it makes a lot of sense, but I think there's a lot of stuff that they left out that they could have put in there. So overall, uh, four directed tech gears out of five for the iBoss Polyphemus filament dryer. As always, if you've enjoyed what I'm uh, doing here on the channel, I would really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button, hit the little bell, and hit the subscribe button, uh, and that way you'll know when I'm dropping new content. Um, there will be more reviews. I've been uh, contacted by several uh, manufacturers, lasers uh, included, so uh, look forward to that in the channel. And as always, I appreciate the time that you invest with me here on Directed Tech, and let's keep learning together.